In this Retro Combs Fast Load, we're going to take a look at an update on the submarine tracking program that we talked about a few videos back. Let's get started. Hey, before I get started, I want to talk about the great day Jamie over at Jamie's Hack Shack and I had at our Community Makerspace grand opening yesterday. We put out two tables full of retro computers, had a lot of folks stop by, both young and old, and spent a good four hours talking retro computing. Also had a chance to debut the Mega 65 in our community. So that was a great day, I just wanted to share that with you. Remember, you can become a member and support the Retro Cones YouTube channel and blog. Speaking of blog, there is a companion blog post for this video. It's down in the video description below that will have all the links you need. And while you're down there, hit subscribe, like. Hey, be sure to leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget, there's also a little thanks button down there if you'd like to show your thank you for the work I do on the channel and the blog. In my previous video, converting a Commodore 128 submarine tracking system basic program to the Mega 65, I show what the title suggests, converting a Commodore 128 basic version seven program called the submarine tracking program found on page 116 of the Commodore 128 programmer's reference guide to the Mega 65 version of basic, which began its life on an unreleased Commodore 65 with basic 10. This video is a follow-up to that project because there's been a lot of updates. As a reminder, this is the original basic version seven C128 submarine tracking system program. My goal was to create an exact duplicate of that code for the Mega 65, but as we learned, that at that particular time was not possible. But we did give it a good college try and we got as close as we could with the status of the Mega 65 ROM at that time. So here's the output from the Commodore 128. And here's what we came up with, or I came up with, with the Mega 65. As you can see, there are some pretty significant differences in the way these two systems render the submarine tracking system. So remember all those times I said basic 10 in the previous video or listed basic 10 in the blog post? Forget all about that. It is now supposed to be called basic 65. Now I always love to throw in a little tip in these videos. If you want to view the contents of a PRG file on a disk or disk image using the Mega 65, you can use the list command followed by the name of the file. Now I use the list command for two primary functions. First of all, number one, to review image listings to determine if I'm looking or loading the correct program. I can just quickly list that program and see the contents. Another feature that I use that's really handy is you can list a program and then you can grab lines out of the program to append to your own program. I had that situation where I was trying to figure out how to use a circle command. I could list a program that had a working circle command. I could move up to that line, give it a line number, hit enter, and it would add it to my current program in memory. So it's a great tip for you as you're learning to use BASIC on the Mega 65. Now back to drawing the submarine tracking system. The first thing that we had to do is we had to use the box command. In my BASIC 65 version of the submarine tracking system, I created a border using the line command instead of the box command from the C128 version. This was done because I could not get the text to overwrite the box line when drawn on top. Per developer bit shifter, control B is not underlined, but blank. Character, or C-H-A-R, has its own control codes, which correspond only partially with the text mode control codes. But it seems that bit shifter forgot to add this code to the table in the manual, which is why I probably missed it. And as a quick reminder, this is what that code looks like starting at line 40. You can see right before submarine, we have a control B or a blank statement.
So now the very first start of the conversion, we finally have the border exactly between the two versions, between the 128 and the Mega 65. Sweet, we're getting there. All right, let's get to the meat and potatoes of all of this. None of what I shared up to this point required any new changes to the Mega 65 ROM. It was all features that I just missed or didn't know about. However, in order for the Mega 65 to draw circles like the C128, and what I mean by that is point to point at the north position clockwise, the developers had to make changes. And again, it was bit shifter to the rescue. If you review my previous attempt at the conversion, you will see that the Mega 65 created circles by drawing four quadrants at the same time. The new circle command allows me to recreate the C128 version, but came with a development journey. BitShifter created a version that drew a circle end to end, but it started at zero degrees instead of 270 degrees. I could use this circle command to make it appear to draw the submarine tracking system circles in the same fashion as the C128. I would have to use the new arc feature of the circle command to draw two arcs, one arc 270 degrees to zero degrees and another arc from zero degrees to 270. And that would create an end to end circle starting at 270 degrees, but that required two circle commands. That's not exactly what I was looking for. I resigned myself to the fact that I was going to have a single difference between my version and the C128 version. And while I could live with this, BitShifter noted my consternation, or simply he was just tired of hearing from me about this in the Discord channel, in the ability of the Mega 65 to make an exact duplicate of the C128 with a single circle command. He got to work and created a new circle command variable that he now calls the, the Combs, Combs flag. flag. That's what happens when you bug people, you get things named after yourself. And it would seem the term was starting to catch on with Maurice saying that the name is fantastic, fantastic and Leiden even intimating that it be listed that way in the user's manual. Let's compare the code and see how to use the, the Combs flag. flag. Boy, that sounds good. In line 80 in the submarine tracking program is the first use of the circle command. Here's the C128 version. You can see there's a lot of flags in that particular command. Next is the shiny new basic 65 version complete with the Combs flag. The Combs flag is a four. And as you see here, it is at the end of line 80 after the coordinates and the radius for the circle. Last thing to do is to track that submarine. And we do that using the line command. To draw the submarine blip, the C-128 uses the C-128's draw command in line 160. Draw has been replaced with the line command in basic 65. If you specify a single start coordinate for either the draw or the line command and omit an end coordinate, you get a single point or a pixel. Now tracking the submarine takes place in line 160. And now with the line command, I can recreate it as it was shown on the C128 version. And that is not a good thing. With that direct conversion, we get the same haphazard blip found in the C128 version that sometimes you see it and sometimes you don't. That is one sneaky submarine. All right, with all the changes implemented, let's see if I succeeded in creating a direct translation from the C128 to the Mega 65. And here's that whole program. As you can see, we have exactly the same line numbers. And with every line of code, it should be very easy to see the conversion from basic version seven to basic 65. And that's about as close a conversion as I'm going to fool with and one that I'm happy with. I couldn't have done it without the responsiveness of BitShifter. I can't wait to see what else is in store for us when the Mega 65 is released. You know, we might be only about a month away. So what's next with the submarine tracking system? I'd really like to use a sprite, create a blip that maybe is even shaped like a sub. Of course, that will be a fun exercise to explore the sprite command, and it will once again allow me to use the Combs flag. All right, that's it for this Retro Combs Fast Load. Retro Combs out. <laughs>